Well, hi, Margaret. It's so nice of you to come hi, here Anna. and join us. Um, we're so excited, and mm -hmm. we can't wait to hear what you have to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After our podcast the last time we had spoken, and um, I had asked you about the history, and there is so much history to this uh, eventing yes and I didn't even understand and I said could you please come back and explain <laughs> this to us and there it, this is a really neat thing so um, where, when did this start or what was the what was the purpose of doing this eventing well when it started was um, they used to just keep it specifically to military it was mm -hmm. it was to test the horse for military soundness um, and um, at the beginning that's what it was they did um, the dressage which is um, they would do what they called tattoos, which were military movements. Um, now it's called dressage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they were started out being called military movements then? Well, they were because um, the military rode horses a lot, you know, before the mm -hmm. Second World War. The First yes. World War horses were very involved in that. But um, they, uh, they had the cavalry, and um, they had to be able to move in large like with enemy and the enemies and things they had to move you know do the side pass yes. they had to do oh, <laughs> all yeah. those you know right. leg yields things yeah. like that mm -hmm. comes from that trying right. to get away from the enemy and yeah. and help the rider out wow. you know mm -hmm. so um it's really uh, uh the uh the second one was um they used to do steeplechase and that would warm the horse up for um the the next phase which would be the cross country phase and the cross country phase was more like um, when I started out riding um, here in Michigan. Um, I uh, I was in my twenties, and the hunters were different than they are now. Mm -hmm. This was more like cross country. We would be out in the mm -hmm. field, and we'd be doing jumps, and that was considered hunters, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. But then it, it switched to where it's at now, the hunters. But um, okay. they're mainly in the ring now, mm -hmm. and the hunters. But um, Anyway, so then they would do, um, and that phase was very difficult for the horses because they were lots of efforts, mm -hmm. you know, for the horse. A lot of them were combined efforts, mm -hmm. you know, a couple together, A, B, and C. Right. And um, then uh, the uh, final one was show jumping just to show that the horse still could do um, fun jump fences, you know, help his, his um, owner mm -hmm. get home. You know, yes. from mm -hmm. from sure. battle and that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, Interesting. so yeah, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where it really started. But uh, when it first kind of started getting into an actual sport, um, it was uh, I think it was in the fifties um, that they started men were riding, and it was still military. Mm -hmm. It was like Italian military, French mm -hmm. military, United States military, mm -hmm. Canadian military. But they, um, they had, uh, um, they had it almost organized like it was starting to be like a, a show. Hmm. You know, they were starting mm -hmm. to like do, uh, oh. do it along with like yeah. hunts. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, at the hunt fields, mm -hmm. and people from the hunt would come and watch them wow. do their mm -hmm. do their their riding and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of it was kind of in between um, the two that are the, the one that's there today. But um, it was it was really um, what's this gentleman's name? I'm trying to think of his name. That's it was okay. um, Neil and Helen Ayer, and probably. Um, you know, the Chronicle of the Horse, I was kind of did some research, but they said that it probably would never have evolved into eventing without this gentleman wow. and this lady, wow. okay. this husband and wife team, that um, one, they had enough money, two, they had enough connections mm -hmm. to be able to build a yes. course on their, oh, wow. uh, you know, mm -hmm. on their land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was called, it was called the Ledyard um, Trials, Horse oh. Trials. And that was the first um, uh, international event you know, wow. actual eventing. They had other, you know, competitions, but it was the first international event um, that, um, you know, that was that happened in the United States. Okay. Um, the uh, the whole thing with with eventing, I guess, the way you can wrap it up, like in, in maybe a couple words, is like um, a uh, a triathlete mm -hmm. um, event, mm -hmm. just like the triathlons, you know. But sure. this is too 
athletes that you have to have prepared that's and right. ready yeah. and on right. for that day. And that's what's that's so right. difficult. Sometimes <laughs> the rider's well on, together. the horse isn't. Sometimes the horse right. is right. on and the yes. rider isn't. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. So they both have to have to you know be in sync right. on, on you know in their peak right. athletically right. on that the day that they especially the day they do cross cross country. Do you know, was it in the East Coast or West Coast that, that this started? East Coast. East Coast. East Coast, yeah, in New York, uh, New Jersey, right around there. Because okay. that's where it used to be called the United States Combined Training Association, USCTA. That's how it started out. Um, but then the FEI decided to change it to um, an actual formal, when they changed it to a formal event, they that's what they ended up calling it, eventing. So that's mm-hmm. when the USEA, it changed to the United States Eventing um, Association. So. Right. Um, that was uh, a big change, but um, the lady who won the very first competition here, her name was was she was from Great Britain. Um, our riders, we only had two riders. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow, That's funny. And That's cute. Um, I think Canada had had four. <laughs> Great Britain wow. brought a whole bunch. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and wow. of course, one of them won. Um, her name was uh, Sue Hatherley. She was riding a horse named Harley. Okay. So, so yeah. So they did have connections. To get people right. here to do something mm-hmm. like that, you yeah. have to have the connections. He paid to have the horses from Europe flown over here. Oh, wow. mm. so, so, yeah, they they obviously had, had a good business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they did something right, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did something right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, he was, um, every, there was, when they changed to the uh, the short form, you know, the long form was what he started with, and you know, he he wanted it to stay that way. He was very adamant that you needed the steeplechase to warm up the horses so they'd be relaxed and and be ready to go on cross country day, uh, um, or the steeplechase was at the beginning of cross country day, but they'd be ready to go on the what they called the phase D, which was the jumps. Mm-hmm. Steeplechase was just a, you know, they were still formidable jumps, but they were you know you could jump through the brush, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like any steeplechase. Um, How so, long would that last usually, like a steeplechase? From start to finish, I'm not do you think? sure exactly what t- what the time was. Um, it seemed to last a long time for me. I mean, I thought it was because it was just sure. you know you're sitting out there in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and there's nobody else around you, right? Waiting for the choices to come, you know, and, right. and stuff. But um, you know, but the steeplechase was fun too, mm-hmm. you know, to see the horses come and walk, jump over those fences. Mm-hmm. But they were all the same, you know. Mm-hmm. In cross country, the f- fences are different, right. and they, you know, they almost it's almost like an art form, yeah. cross country design. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's kind of gotten to that point mm-hmm. where there's people who uh, who actually do that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they use the uh, um, the chainsaws and everything to mm-hmm. to make the trees into squirrels and things like that. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Wow! Into yeah. ducks. Yeah. 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 Wow! <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, um, the uh, the big thing with eventing is. Um, there was, you know, the long format, like I said, and then the, then the short format came into being because um, it seemed like there were more people who were, who were um, interested in the actual Phase D cross country, mm-hmm. but they also felt that the horses um, might be getting a little tired, mm-hmm. um, but they weren't sure, so they tried, decided to try it, the short format. And the horses were a little... Um, you might say fresh in the morning <laughs> when they first started yeah. jumping, yeah. but then they it's it's about eleven to twelve minutes, um, you know, somewhere re- depending on the jumps, and you know that's the time, the optimum time mm-hmm. is what they call it. The optimum mm-hmm. time is you can't go too fast because you get penalties for being too fast, right. and there's also penalties for being too slow. So yeah. and you it's can't like a pace. Yeah, yeah it's, mm-hmm. a pace, it's a pace. Yeah, pace. Mm-hmm. and um, you'll see riders looking at this big yellow watch on their. And and the, and the numbers on their arms, they they wow. write the numbers on their arms they just know. like so they swimmers can see do. It. So they can mm-hmm. see it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they can they can see the breaks wow. and everything. Yeah, mm, that's yeah, cool. their splits and all that. So wow. Yeah, and the horse doesn't look at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he doesn't care. He's just jumping the fence. <laughs> wow. But they they really have to be brave because they've never seen that. Um, yeah. You know the the jumps. Mm-hmm. It's just the rider. They go yes. out and they have to trust the rider. Wow. So. But um, and it goes pretty well most of the time, you know. Um, I would say that uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the '78 World Equestrian Games. Okay. The yeah. reason why they came mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. and they built it in um, Kentucky was because Bruce Davidson had won the World Equestrian Games the year before, mm-hmm. or the last one, mm-hmm. and um, so uh, 
you know, usually they'll think about doing it where the, the winner is country, okay. you know, the World Equestrian mm-hmm. Games. So that was kind of logical, and Lexington was kind of a logical right. place mm-hmm. right. because there's so many thoroughbreds right. there, right. you know. And um, it cost about $35 million to, to put that thing together. Mm-hmm. I had no idea when, I was, mm-hmm. when I'm down there, you know, I don't think of that, $35 million. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah that was a lot of money, but... Mm-hmm. But it's turned out to be a very, um, very good thing for the community yeah. as well as for the horse community, mm-hmm. you know. And um, wow. it just seems to really, um, people kind of become a whole team out there, mm-hmm. you know. All, all the, uh, the spectators. And they even, come together. You know, yeah. yeah. They just gather together. And, like, you can feel the... yeah. Oh, symmetry of everything. Oh, you uh-huh. can. Yeah, you can. And the energy in is the just morning. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah in the it? morning. Yeah, yeah when mm-hmm. you get when you get there, and I, I, I drive people around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I drive really people can. around to get them to their jumps, mm-hmm. and um, there's only a couple of us that, that do that because they don't want many many vehicles out there on the course. Mm-hmm. So um, they <laughs> they just uh, you can you can, it's electric when you get onto yes, the it is. on the horse park. Mm-hmm. You get yes, onto the grounds and it's like you get out of your car and you can feel it. <laughs> you know, all the anticipation yeah. of all mm-hmm. those even if it's raining. Mm-hmm. You know it happens so much with like skilled people or when they do like um, games like that. You yes. know, you can just feel it. Uh-huh. And it's just something that is really exciting. It, mm-hmm. it just you feel like there's vibration almost, you know. It's right. Exciting, right. really exciting. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure the horses can tell too <laughs> yeah you know i mean they pick up on everything so oh they do yes they do and they know it's their job you know i think that some of them get so excited and yeah you know it's 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 exciting a yes. lot of the writers have, have said this last year when yeah. it when spectators weren't involved they said it was di- so different because it was so quiet I bet. Yeah. yeah because I bet. they're used to the crowds you know right giving them a boost as they get yeah. to the head of the lake and that kind yeah. of thing you know but um the uh in 78 the, it was the first time course designing and that yeah. kind of mm-hmm. thing. And they, they, you know, they did have somebody who was experienced, you know, to course design mm-hmm. um, from over in Europe. But sure. um, the fences were just huge. I mean, they were very, very large. They were. And, mm-hmm. and were mm-hmm. you there? There was, No, but oh. I watched a lot yeah. at that time, and they were getting, like, so big. So, so big. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And they had one called the Kennels right after the... Um, um, what was that? The other one that was it was the, the fort. You had to go up. The horse had to jump an effort, then jump onto a um, a, a ramp, um, a bunch of you know, it was grass and, and all that yeah. grassy ramp. Yeah. Then they had to jump over as they came up the hill over uh-huh. another in and out, mm-hmm. and then they had to go up another in and out to go oh down yeah. down the hill, and then they had to turn to go to the kennels, and there was mm-hmm. there was just no break form at all mm-hmm. the right. kennels were um a really close in and out mm-hmm. and you know we kind of hung around mm-hmm. that area the people mm-hmm. that i was with because you know they were all the people that i rode with we all went together in camp but it was um it was just really and then and the water jumps the water jumps the water was so deep right a lot of the horses trotted yeah. um the, the people who were real experienced trotted their horses through that water now it's not near as deep as it, as it was they then. They changed a lot. Yeah. They changed they a lot. They did change a lot because yeah. they got almost two. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, towards the um, – Right. My tango got through clear. Um, that was Bruce Davidson's horse. And he got through clear, and, and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden my tango started mm-hmm. um, shaking and, you know, had given everything yeah. he could. Oh. And, and Bruce, you know, realized it and – a doctor came over right away a bit and took care of him, and, and they put ice in there, and they packed him yeah. in ice and everything. And, yeah. and he was he was fine by the next day. He right. passed mm-hmm. the vet the vet check and everything. You know, he was very uh, – um, he bounced back real fast. Right. I was really surprised. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. those, those fences – I remember watching – everybody wanted to watch Bruce Davidson. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. You know, now I do. But <laughs> yeah. um, at the time, you know, the event team was not really – on the radar of horse people very mm-hmm. much unless unless you were in the military and you rode it was you know then it was in the um your radar but mm-hmm. other than that real horse people were just starting it was starting to come alive yeah. in them you know and they were starting to uh um kind of uh realize there was something else out here hey here's another challenge you know yes. that we can probably go for yeah you know and uh but i was real surprised michael plum 
he was one of our best writers. Yes. Yeah, you remember him. I do. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I do. I yes, I do. Yep. Yes. And I used to put out a horse journal, and I get it all the time, Michael Pump's horse journal. We get that all the time. Oh, yeah. you really? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, he was, he thought, as far as he got, was just to, um, there was an in and out on a bank that had, like, um, the, the wood uh, going crisscrossing, and almost every horse didn't make it past that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was only a handful that made it past yeah. that. Yeah. And it was a very difficult sort yes. of question, I think, for the horses. Yeah. But some of them met it and some of them didn't, you know. But uh, at that time, if they fell off, they could get back on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they could just take off. And most of them did. <laughs> they all got back on. They, and they kept on going. Yeah. You know, now Michael Plum couldn't because his horse um, was injured. I think he, he got sore from the yeah. hitting the... The rails, but mm -hmm. um, that's but now just, they can't get back on. No, no. Now we they know once um, their vest. You know they have a vest that now um, will if once they're de detached from the saddle, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. it inflates. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So um, one, they couldn't get back on like that. Right. Be a little hard to ride, mm -hmm. but um, also uh, medical staff has told us that um, you don't know whether right. somebody has. A hidden injury or not, right. you know, and um, now if you fall, you fall, you you know, you're eliminated, you know, mm -hmm. you come back another day, mm -hmm. and and most of the riders are very good at that, you know, mm -hmm. they're very good with that, they understand it, and some mm -hmm. of them even, if they feel their horse is too tired, right. they'll think of their horse yeah. first, yeah. instead yeah. of all the money they spent right. getting mm -hmm. there, right. you know, but uh, yeah. it was, um, amazing. yeah, yeah, it is, it, it's, it's amazing that they can, uh, that they were able to do that back then, I I was reading that, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I remember yeah. that. I remember yeah. that they just, you know, yeah. the, the fence judges would just help them back right. on the horse, you know. And Away you go. There yeah. they go, yeah. you know, they're yeah. all muddy and everything, yeah. they're wet. And yeah. there they go. I mean, it kind of yeah. goes along with the history, though, right? right. You know, you, that's what you would have to do anyways, right? Right. right. If you were in the military and you were right. being chased by, you know, yeah. you wouldn't walk the enemy. Your horse away. <laughs> you wouldn't walk your horse <laughs> right. away. Yeah, that's right. You'd get back on and you'd yeah. take off. And, yeah. yeah. All of us rode that way too. We yeah. just did. Oh, I remember yes. that. We, we just yeah. did. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, and it's changed a bit now, you know, but yeah, yeah. we were just really tough. tough I feel, yeah, I fell once yeah. and I, I, yeah. yeah, I could barely hear, hear Sally, you know, my trainer um, behind me, and I was riding this pony and, <laughs> and he stopped like right at the fence and I went over the fence. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. and, but I just said, she said, How are you doing? And I said, I'm fine. And I got back on and I rode all yeah. the way around and I had, I had broken yeah. ribs and I yeah. didn't know it. Oh, my God. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was, mm -hmm. it was, that's what we all yeah. did back then, right? Yeah. 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 Everybody did. We had a good story about that this morning. I was talking about that, too, with our hunt group. You know, we had a oh, were you? gentleman on our hunt group that was, uh, <laughs> you know, a little off track here, but, you know, was in our group and rode and came off of his horse, and we got a hold of someone to take him back to the hunt club, and uh, if you came off your horse, you had to buy a round of drinks for everybody. So no. <laughs> the gentleman had had, we, we stuck bar tab inside of his coat and they took him to the hospital and he had a heart attack he was okay but he, we made a pay the bar tab <laughs> I mean we were pretty tough people you know but we loved it it was great you know he yeah. thought that was the best yeah. you know we all just said hey you know if we we come off and something happens we did what we were enjoying doing the most when we came off or whatever happened yeah you know, I'm glad we were I didn't all like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were pretty tough Believe it or not, yeah. Uh -huh. So, but I mean, that was the mentality then. You right. know, we just whatever it was, you just you, you just did you, it. Yeah, you did it. And right. you just sucked it up, you right. know, and yeah. just kept on yeah. going. Yeah. You know, nowadays, yeah. you know, the sport is so exact and, and physiology is so exact. You know, as far as your your ability to ride and all that. You know, it's, it's yeah. if you're yeah. kind of. Uh, I was at one show. This is a little regress, but um, I was at one show. It was one of the lower level shows, but it was like a um an advanced level, and um, this lady went over the fence and then just came off her horse and and she wanted to get back on mm -hmm. and we kept on telling her no you know yeah. and we were waiting yeah. for the yeah <laughs> the paramedics to get right. there to check her out you know right. and she kept on saying i'm fine i'm fine yes. and we said okay what where are you at and she said i don't know and, oh, <laughs> and oh, it's no. like you know what's your name i don't know oh she was not so we're like okay <laughs> you're, you're not, not okay. getting back maybe out. a little concussion or something <laughs> yeah. more yeah. you know yeah. 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 yeah 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 but she said yep. i can get back on <laughs> right well, we all had that that's all what right. it was you just got back on your horse and yeah. rode you know yes yeah. i fell off of a horse i blacked out and my dad i was terrified of any shots any doctors oh. i mean anything like that yeah. 
I heard my dad say, we're going to call the ambulance. And I jumped Shut up, up. And I said, I'm fine. <laughs> like the, the smelling salts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. back to life. All you have to say is anything with doctors. And I was we're like, going to give I'm you good. a shot. <laughs> I know. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 That's so yeah. funny. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But it's um, the, um, the way they, they used to train was different, too, because yes. um, they used to have the big, heavy thoroughbreds. They were they were the big ones because mm-hmm. they could get through steeple chase and cross country, right. and um, that was that was the type of horse you wanted was right. something some horse with real substance, right. you know, physically, mm-hmm. so that you know you could build their muscles and that sure. kind of thing, and they'd be able to go for a long time. Sure. Well, now um, you know they thought that all the thoroughbreds would go away if they did the short, you know, the, the short form, and um, now thoroughbreds are are almost, you know, just specifically for that yeah. oh, really? you know the ones so, yeah a lot of them they get off the track stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah. you know um it's just um they really thought that the thoroughbreds would would kind of decline as far as being popular but they have the stamina mm-hmm. and and that's what a lot of people they have the stamina physically as well as mentally, mentally. to mm-hmm. get through it right. and um yeah it's just um you know, when Bruce Davidson rode um, in 78, he had Mike Tango. He had uh, his other horse um, pulled up lame that he was going to ride, and he had only had a couple weeks to get this horse. You know, it was still in shape, but Mike Tango was, um, he wasn't real familiar as much with him as he was his previous horse, you know, that was lame. And But he got, you know, he's, he was such a good rider, he was able to, you know, really gel with the horse really quickly, mm, yeah. you know, and um, that's difficult to do. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It really is. If you, Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, it's a uh, I was, I, I thought that was impressive that you know he he won the uh, individual, um, gold, mm-hmm. but Canada won the uh, or mm-hmm. wait Germany and then mm-hmm. Canada. Mm-mm. Germany won, won the gold and then save they won silver, and I think we got the bronze oh, team wow. wise team wise. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. but. Um, now we give them a run for their money down there. You know, New Zealand was really, really strong for quite a while because New Zealand is such a, I don't know, it's such a country that is very um, hilly and, you know, horses are just like Great like Britain, you know, horses cross are. Cross country, yeah, yeah, perfect for Everybody that. Everybody rides, yeah, yeah. Right, perfect yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and the New Zealand riders are really good, you know, they just, they grow up riding, mm-hmm. you yes. know, and, yeah. well, now we have, we have one of them, <laughs> uh, as an American citizen, um, wow. Phil Dutton, mm-hmm. he was, uh, um, he came from New Zealand, and he's mm-hmm. with, um, oh, there's another guy in his barn that, uh, they, they were the ones who had the fire in their barn that I talked mm-hmm. about last time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but um, they're really good, um, there used to be before, Phil Dutton was Blythe Tate. He was from New Zealand, and he rode for New Zealand. Wow. And he was very good, too. Mm-hmm. And then there's, um, I think I have a, a poster of um, uh, the other gentleman from, from Great Britain. I'll wait until we talk about that. But um, he he's just, some of these riders, you know, our riders are really intense, and, and <laughs> they look like they're just focused, and which is good. You have mm-hmm. to be for these jumps. But some of them, it looks like they're doing a walk in the park. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you go over, you'll see the one pose one. They're just sitting there, and they're just sitting there like they're sitting on a rocking horse. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, this I horse is going into the water. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought about that. I mean, we're so flat land up here. And right. We're in Ohio, very right. flat land. Yes. Never would have thought about where you grew up and oh. what you were around that would actually help you to yeah. ride that too. Yeah. Yeah. It helped. It helped them a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, they, and and they knew horses like. You know, horses were part of the family. Yeah. You know, and now it's like they're here um, in a lot of ways, but we keep them more um, separated from the house. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know. But with them, it, it was just a you know, and the same with uh, you know yeah. all, all the European yeah. countries too. Horses were they lived with them basically. They lived with them. I mean, they did. Yeah. They had their barns mm-hmm. beneath and their house above, and right. their horses were just a part of everything they did. Right. They, you know, it was part of their family. Right, mm-hmm. and they they took them to. Uh, you know, to market and right. all that stuff, right. you know, for a right. long time. Right. But um, someday I'll have, maybe I'll, you know, if you want, I can do a program on the uh, the First World War. I talked about um, at the library 
I did a presentation on ho- horses in the Second World War, mm-hmm. and and they pretty much won the war, and a lot yeah. of a lot of or in the First World War, the Second World War they didn't use them near as much. They still mm-hmm. used the cavalry, but not mm-hmm. near as much mm-hmm. as the, the, f- the First World War. It was they were just key for every mm-hmm. country, mm-hmm. you know. So. Right. Um, so important. Yes, I mean, our, our yeah. country was really built and started with, you know, people and horses. I mean, right. it really, really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think people forget that, you know, how mm-hmm. much of a part they are of our country. Yeah, yeah that's so true. They truly are. You're right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a natural thing for it us is. to have them. But, it really is. But a lot of people don't think that way, you know. No. They think that it's no. something that is, you know, um, that's the one thing. It's, it's really, it's an expensive sport. Yeah. yeah. But over in other countries... Since it's such a part of the family, it's not it's near what as they do. Right, it's, it's what, what they, they do, do. Right. and and they they kind of make money for right. it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there there is a a, um, a development that they started a few years back. I think it was ninety nine. That it's called the Grand Slam of Eventing. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, and there's three competitions that if um, if somebody wins them all in the you know, in the same series there's a series sometimes it, it's split between like one is it's the same year it's in 12 months okay. within 12 months okay mm-hmm. these three competitions one mm-hmm. is kentucky mm-hmm. um the, the let's or the uh, land rover kentucky three-day event mm-hmm. and then the other one is in uh, it's a mitsubishi motors badminton horse trial in england and then there's another the third one is the land rover Burley horse trials mm-hmm. near uh, stanford lincolnshire in england mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so ours is the only one that's on this continent, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the one that is with um, mm-hmm. Lexington. But mm-hmm. if you win those three, there you get lots and lots of money. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. When, when you go to these, Margaret, are you just so, like, excited inside? I mean, do you, like, when you really start to think about it, I would just be like, <gasps> you know, the adrenaline would just kick up. And, yeah, I mean, you know you have to watch into your job and things, but right. when you really start to think about it, doesn't the passion come through of, of what they do? And, you know, just, I, I don't know. It'd oh, be it so does. cool to be able to do that. I never, you know, but it'd be so neat to be able to. You know, it does it. when, um, especially my first, you know, like my first 10 years doing it. Um, but it still comes to the excitement and stuff. And um, right. after we're, you know, after we're done with the competition and we can all, we, they, they have to hold us for a half hour for any, any uh, mm-hmm. inquiries or anything. Yeah. But, yeah. So we all get together and, and you know, we have to, and the t- there's a tent they keep for us. And, yeah. and we have snacks and stuff. And, they, yeah. and, you know, we all talk about, you know, how it's great. a camaraderie. Yeah, it's really, it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. The friendships are pretty it is. close. It is. Yeah, yeah. When we all yeah. get down there, you know, we we pick up friendships yeah. that. Any time, I think, cool. after people ride, whether I don't care what discipline it is, and you get done and you ride and you, or you sit and talk, yeah. you get all your stories that you have to tell yeah. and hash out and talk about. Yeah. Because it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we, can't, we can't talk about them to yeah. other people. No. Yeah. We can no. only talk about them to each no. other right. until, yeah. right. until, like, right. it's like within 48 hours, and we yeah. still can't talk to the press. Mm. We always have to refer them to somebody yeah. else. Right. Mm. Because yeah. there could be, you know, a late inquiry oh, or yeah. something, you sure. know, that... that Something might be, right. you know, that they see on the films that they don't right. see when when, Absolutely. when the yeah. horse is going through or something. Absolutely, but, uh, sure. Yeah, so that's that's mm-hmm. really exciting. There's only been two riders who have gotten won the Grand Slam, mm-hmm. and the first one was Pippa Funnel from England, mm-hmm. and I never thought that she she'd go for it. I really, she seemed to be kind of an almost intermediate, like huh. she liked to be in the intermediate type of. Huh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, though it was four star, it still was four star, but she seemed to almost like to be in the middle of the wow. of the bunch. Mm-hmm. You know, she never, she's not a person who, I don't know, likes to be in the limelight and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. But she was very, mm-hmm. uh, you know, everybody was thrilled for her because uh-huh. we were waiting for somebody to win it. Right. You know, since it <laughs> right. came out, I, right. you know, and um, I have her picture there, and um, the uh, the other one was Michael Jung from Germany, wow. and he. He got it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, um, what was it? Uh, Fox Pitt. That's his last name. I can't remember his first name. William. William Fox Pitt. Wow. He had two of them, but then um, because of COVID, they had to mm. cancel the one. Mm. And so he had a chance. And then he had a chance. And then the, the next year, yeah. I don't know, um, the horse that he had, because you can have different horses. Mm-hmm. It's his rider who wins it. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's uh, he he just 
you know, didn't make it. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was there, like, in the top ten, but, mm-hmm. you know, somebody else won it that time. Mm-hmm. I felt so bad for him. Everybody was, like, rooting for him, you know. Even, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the spectators all knew. A lot of the spectators are very knowledgeable about mm-hmm. eventing. A lot of them are eventers. Mm-hmm. So I was... Uh, uh, you know, excited for them, you know, mm-hmm. that finally somebody, it was possible. Yeah. You know, it is possible. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if I was younger, yeah. I would go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. you're doing great with what you're doing right now. So yeah. I, I, would, I would do that, you know. So what, yeah. what is the poster? Is there something uh, that you brought to? posters. Do you want yeah. Oh, we'd okay. like to see. Okay, yeah. There. yeah. Yeah, why don't yes. we take a peek at those colors that we use for the different, uh, the national levels that uh, oh, wow. okay. that we have to find on the court because <laughs> wow. they can be either on you know two of them on the same fence and some on just one fence and you wow. got to find the right one the right competition wow. Ooh, that you're doing look oh look at these these, these so, posters oh, can look you look at that this is Karen O'Connor oh wow um, and it's always the picture of the person who won the year before okay yeah we can put and then so she won in ninety seven to grab the one at a time for you okay. well yep this is um, yeah, this is Pippa Funnel, isn't it? Wow. Uh, let's see. Her little name face. It's on there. <laughs> I know it is. Is it at the bottom right there? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yep, yeah, right there. Tremor's Pride. Uh-huh. And it's Pippa Funnel. Yeah, she, that was when she won. Wow. That was a three-star and a four-star. Oh. They did mm-hmm. at the same time. And, of course, um, you know, that's, they have both, both writers, the winners, on there. And... Uh, um, Let's see, Kim Stevenson and uh, who's the other one? Uh, oh, Windfall too, and Darren Chiacha. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but how, how beautiful! <laughs> yeah, so and beautiful. Uh, he he rides for the U.S. and uh, mm. he won it. He won it um, in uh, two thousand. Oh, so cute! Look at how tucked. <laughs> yeah, so cute. two thousand eight. He was a two thousand eight winner, Little but ears. they put the poster out the next year. Wow! And everybody. I mean, it's, they run out of them. Fox Pitt, I think it is. Sideways, he's I one guess. of my favorite writers. He's just so businesslike. Aww. He's a very tall gentleman, and he? so he has to balance yeah. really carefully on oh, the yeah. horse so that he doesn't get too far forward on the horse. Yeah, because I was going to say there's a lot of leg there to yes. have to be careful with. Yeah. Yes, and, and yeah. everybody's you know, just surprised when he gets off and there's this <laughs> tall very, gentleman very there. Very, tall person. Mm-hmm. You know, but mm-hmm. you can tell just by the way he rides the horse, he's very right. just... He's just calm and businesslike. It's like he's out there in the field wow. training the horse, and that's, you don't even wow. you don't even wow. see it. You know. Now this, this one is, is and this is the one that I was talking about. He just looks like he's a. Uh, it's um, Quimbo and Andrew Nicholson. Look at him. Look at how he's just sitting there, like just like no big deal. Yeah, yeah. he's got just a little jog in the park. He's like yeah, a little you know? jog in the park. He's going over the. He's going <laughs> over one of the like, ducks at at I the head like of the lake. Looks wow. very comfortable. Yeah. This one hand, we'll go over this one and hit the water, and off we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's just horse go on, horse. Oh, that's him. That's uh, Cool Mountain and Lonely Fox Pick. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't look like him, not the way I know him now. Mm-hmm. He's older now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's very young there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and he, they, they do different styles of the posters and stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, the posters are very cool. I really like those. Good. Those are really special. That's yeah. neat, Margaret. Thank yeah, you for I want to frame them. I have, I have two yeah, frames Yeah, should. Those so are far. very special. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, very um, neat. I don't know if they'll be collector's so. items or not one of these days. Yeah, but, but they're very special. They are. They're, they're really, very special. I'm sure to they me. will it's be. Lots of memories. I'm sure they will yeah. be. Right. And I right. see the rider, and I go, "Oh yeah, I remember that year." Right. You know, uh, this uh, happened or that happened or right. it rained. Yeah. You know, all day. It rained all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, the other the other thing on on the history is that um, there's there's just a whole plethora of of things you can find. Um, um, one one of the special things that happened to me was um, um, let's see it was uh, I think it was in ninety ninety eight because um, Biko was Karen O'Connor's horse I don't know if you know Karen O'Connor and David O'Connor David mm-hmm. O'Connor is the head of the USEF uh-huh. yeah and um, anyway uh, they both used to ride and Karen O'Connor was riding Biko well poor Biko <laughs> he was a very very good horse they had him. Um, so people could come and pet him and get their picture with him, uh-huh. and he was he was so good. Uh-huh. I got a picture with him. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. and that I, was I just yeah, it's I I that was looking was really for it this one. I couldn't find it. Uh-huh. And I, I, oh, sweet. My my photo albums are in different boxes and stuff, uh-huh. you know, and I haven't opened those since I moved uh-huh. two years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, 
it's just um, it was a really special yeah. moment because they don't do that anymore because the horses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Biko was just the type of horse that it wouldn't bother him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could yeah. compete, and so what if there's all these you know thousands of people around? I don't wow, care. So you know. So yeah. what if all these people want to pet me? <laughs> you know, I want to say hi too. You know. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> he was Aww. Yeah, he had this big white blaze on his face. Aww. You know, and uh, he it's was a just sweetheart sweet. of a horse. Yeah. 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 Sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. And and Very that cool. was yeah. Yeah, Karen, Karen O'Connor and David O'Connor were really very cool. uh, it was fun to watch them ride. Mm-hmm. You know, now they're you know they have their own riders come and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, and that's fun to watch too. Yeah. You know, I like to when I go to the dressage. It's um, they didn't used to have like the warm up rings available to yeah. you. Um, they kept everything you know kind of back, but now way way at the very beginning there was. There were no fences, since I mean around the yeah. the warm up ring and that kind of thing. You know, people could come yeah. right up if they wanted to, but there weren't that many people who were yeah. who were spectators at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. it wasn't out in the world. You know, at that point, and uh, it was the best right. kept secret. You mm-hmm. know, in the right. United States, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, you know that's that's why I think if I'd been maybe a couple of years younger, I might have like gone into eventing as as a professional, but wow. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's very special to get your picture with a horse like yes. that for something like that. Yeah. Kristen just had a really special picture taken too, which is not yes. the same, not <laughs> at all in the same, you know. But but she had a good. What when was we your... were in Mackinac Island, we oh. went to the Grand Hotel Stables. Yeah, you told us about that, so yeah. we went up there and, and saw them. And they had their 19 hand horse up there. He's the, the biggest, biggest horse the on the island, horse. Yep. Mm-hmm. and his name is Zeke. And I got a, a picture with him. Oh, of course, so. Kristen's five foot tall, and the horse is 19 <laughs> hands. Say, yeah, you, so it's you, quite the picture. Yeah, yeah were you, so. who you up to, Fetlock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but how exciting to get a picture with yeah. a horse like that. You know, when they're that kind yeah. of like, just it stand there and get the picture. It's mm-hmm. sweet. It, you mm-hmm. never forget yeah. something like that. It's mm-hmm. very special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, over the over the history of the of the. Um, the the cross country day, people there never used to be reserved seats, so you had to get there about four o'clock in the oh morning to even my. get any seat. Oh my! Because people would, people would they already have it. Yeah. They they would you know they're horse people. They get yeah. up early. You know right. I mean yeah. you know so get up and go. <laughs> yeah, get up and go. So they would end up, you know, getting there four o'clock in the morning from the hotel. And all of a sudden, if somebody came like nine o'clock, they'd think, "Oh well, you know, doesn't or, or well, maybe around eight o'clock because it would start somewhere around nine or ten, mm-hmm. okay? Well, if they got there by that time, it was too late. Yeah, yeah. you couldn't get a seat because they didn't have um, the arena um, seating. Mm-hmm. They just had like the side seating. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you had to yeah. kind of stand around. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember? Yep, yeah. I do. I yeah. do remember. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and and it was. It was just crazy, yeah. you know, with all the, you know, stuff. So they finally decided, um, some bright soul somewhere decided, well, why don't we entertain these people since they're going to be sitting here for a while <laughs> yeah. and, until the show jumping starts at 1 o'clock in the there afternoon. There you go, yeah. You know? yeah. So they started bringing in, um, uh, they, they always have a pony club competition down there mm-hmm. um, okay. between teams, you know, down there. Um, it's a short one, but... Anyway, this, so they have the pony club come through, you know, and they're so all their sweet. colors and everything, oh, and their cute. jackets, and, and the ponies are all made oh, up, you know, and braided and all that. <laughs> and then they have, um, speaking of big horses, they usually have the carriage horses, oh, and yes. um, they have, a couple of times they've had the Budweiser Clydesdales oh, there, yes. and everybody is, like, thrilled yeah. to death with that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's and just they've fun had, to see. Yeah, you know? and they've had the, the Hackneys, and they've had yeah. um, uh, the big Percherons. Oh, I mean, yes. they were like 17 hand yeah. percherons yeah. and they they're were big. just so quiet yeah. yeah and so they're so sweet because there is like a crowd there you know you yeah. think they would they're not used to the crowds like right. the other you know the other horses are right. that compete right. they've gotten used to people being around right. yeah you know but um they were percherons just so good are sweet mm-hmm. yeah and mm-hmm. then they would they brought in the black horse troop from culver indiana mm. Um, which mm. I was familiar with from living in Indiana, but mm. I didn't know they'd come up with in Kentucky. Wow. But they, they were very good. They did a whole presentation, you know, of the horses, wow. like, going between each other yes. and all that. It was yeah. it was yeah. really, real it was really special, you know. Mm. And, and now it's kind of evolved into um, sometimes they, there's also, there is a, um, you can go to at any time. They have what's called a presentation of breeds with all different breeds. Uh-huh. That's in another ring. Mm-hmm. But in the main ring where the show jumping happens, they, um, they'll they bring out, oh, uh, one time uh, Brian O'Connor, which is David O'Connor's brother, who mm-hmm. does all our um, radio um, mm-hmm. uh, 
communications. He's the head of our communications. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would do a explanation of dressage, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a funny one. He would, he would do, <laughs> he, he had a microphone on and he would explain, this is what I'm, what I'm going to do. And then he would do like just the opposite or something. Say, well, I was supposed to do it that way, but I didn't. You know, my horse wouldn't do it, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Aww. So, yeah, Aww. it was, it was pretty, uh, That's funny. they kind of think of different things, yeah, you know, to, to kind of keep the, the crowd entertained. Right. Exactly. You yeah. know, because there's so many people there. Now mm -hmm. you can reserve seats, which is really great, nice. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. before you couldn't. And yeah. it was it was fighting, you know. Yeah, yeah I can only imagine. Well, yeah. it's it definitely something that you can see has evolved and come from, you know, to see how the yeah. process of it, which yes. is very interesting, you know, to see. So Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, that's a good, that was a lot of history and a lot of a lot of information. So we just appreciate it so much yeah. that you came You're to welcome. Margaret You're to welcome. talk to us. Thank you. Sure, We always sure. enjoy it when you come. Oh, so. thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for inviting me. So I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It was It was fun. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube where you can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like us to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast at or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening.